Hello everybody, welcome back to Rain and Pause. I'm Mitch and welcome to part two of my Butterfly Nebula dining table video. You can see here on screen that my table is all dry and you'll notice straight away that there are some huge cracks and crevices. This was because I had too much pillow paint on my surface and I wasn't able to spin that all off. You would have seen from part number one how difficult it was to spin that table and there's only so much paint you can put on there for it to spin out and there's only so much that you can get off. So I do have some cracks and crevices but we're going to turn the floor into a feature. So I'm highlighting those by painting in some colours and I believe here I've got a mixture of Matisse Australian Red Violet mixed with Pebeo Iridescent Red Blue and I'm also using uh, Pebeo Iridescent Blue Black. So these colours are both colour shifty colours, they are tube paints and they will dry different to what they look wet. So the iridescent red blue will dry more of a purpley with a blue colour shift and the iridescent blue black will dry almost black or like a dark grey with a really nice blue colour shift. So I'm painting in the cracks with a thin paintbrush and I'm going to do this with several colours. So I end up mixing up some Unicorn, Crescendo and Flamingo from this little piggy, so the same colours that I've used in the pour, and I fill in some of the cracks in the areas in that painted nebula with those colours as well. So I just sort of go with what's uh, more common in those areas and painting that in. So just giving some detail to where that cell activator sunk and where those cracks have formed. I'm also drawing in some details here and there where I think they need them and I don't actually do that any further, I just did it in that one particular section because I didn't really like where that was going, but the other side I thought had a lot of detail already. So what I did there was I painted on some crescendo uh, mixed with the varnish and now I'm going in with a large makeup brush and a small fluffy brush and I'm dry brushing pigment onto the surface. Now I did find that in certain areas the pigment wasn't sticking, so later on in the video I do go over this with uh, some spray gloss varnish, so it just comes in a can, and that provides a little bit of tack for the pigment to adhere to. So you can see here I'm brushing Unicorn into these crevices. Now I do want to point out that I did not use any green at all in this painting, and you can clearly see up in the top right hand corner there a nice stroke of green. Anywhere you see green, that is Flamingle. Now Flamingle is the pale pink to green colour shift, so all of that gorgeous colour shifty um, goodness is coming out uh, in that pigment. So uh, from one angle you see blue on this table and from another angle you see pinks and purples um, and if you look really hard on an angle you'll get these beautiful gold tones as well. So you'll see now I'm dry brushing the pigment on into those uh, crevices and into the cracks and I'm using a combination of a large brush and a small brush. So the small brush is to give direction and define the lines where the large brush is to soften those out. Now I kept the top half of this table quite black so I didn't put too much uh, detail up the top there but the bottom half to try and sort of hide the cracks but also accentuate them I did focus a lot more on the bottom half of this table. Now I do plan to put two coats of resin on this at least. The first coat is going to have my usual white unicone glitter in that to give it a little bit of sparkle. But before I do put any resin on, I'm going to use my chrome marker, my Molotow chrome markers, to add some stars here and there throughout the piece. I don't want to overdo it, but if you've seen my Butterfly Nebula painting, which was the practice for this piece, you'll know exactly what I'm going to do. Uh, and if you haven't, go and watch that video. So first layer of resin will have my normal glitter. I will also add some Unicorn, Crescendo and Flamingo to the resin and make some flowing streaks of pigment and I plan to blow those out so they're really nice and gentle and also add in some harder lines to make it look a little bit more detailed and defined and that's going to give a little bit of depth to the first layer of resin and then in the second layer of resin that will be my top coat ideally unless I decide that I do want to put another layer of detail on this in which case I'll do the whole process again I might mix up the colors a little bit um, and then if I do decide that the second coat is going to be for more detail, I'll put a flood coat on top. Now the reason I would like to put a flood coat on top is because stone coat is rated by the FDA in America as food safe, but if you put any glitter or anything inside the resin, 
it no longer becomes food safe. So any pigments, dyes, powders, anything like that, no longer food safe. So if you're looking at what I'm doing up on the screen, all of that green coming from the center was just for mingle. <laughs> that pigment is, is, it's really amazing. It blows my mind every time I use it. So you can see I'm spraying on that varnish, giving the surface a little bit of uh, tack to pick up those pigments and hold everything down. All right, so there's not much else I need to tell you from this point onwards. So sit back, enjoy, and as usual, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video, guys. Bye.